Party member Representative Shu is present and remote. Representative Anderson, I've not seen yet. I'll keep an eye out for everybody. Representative Baker is present and remote. Representative Burke Camp. Present. Present and remote. Representative Day. Representative Donahoe. I'm here. I'm here. Sorry. Okay, that was Representative Day is present remote. Representative Donahoe. Representative Finney. Representative Kessler is present in, in the committee room with me. Representative Lynn is present and remote. Representative Neely is present and remote. Representative Poskin is present and remote. Representative Samsil. Yeah, I'm here. Thank you. Representative Samsil is present and remote. Representative Toplicker. Representative Wassinger. Present and remote. I saw her a little bit earlier. I'm Representative Wa Thank you, Representative Wassinger. Representative Weigel is present and remote. I'll keep looking for the others, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thanks, Rich. Uh, looks like we've got enough to uh, to get underway. We had two hearings scheduled for today. The one hearing on uh, 2236 is the first on your agenda. We are going to delay that until Wednesday. There's still some uh, testimony that's coming in on that. So uh, we will delay that and put them with the two other bills that were uh, planning to hear on that day, and we should have enough time to do that. I appreciate, like I said, everyone coming and uh, joining us today uh, for this uh, hearing because it's on a bill that uh, we we're going to need to uh, hear and be ready to do something with uh, if if necessary, and it is. Uh, the uh, it's 237 and it is uh, a bill to extend the time period on raws and we'll explain why that that needs to happen uh, here in the uh, uh, for right now what the reasoning is behind this bill but uh, the testimony uh, you have on uh, on uh, 2237 is most mostly written that we've received in and and probably good on a day like this but we do have a couple oral proponents uh, I'm I am one of them and we have a neutral proponent that I think is going to join us remote so uh, committee uh, so today on house bill uh, 2237 at uh, David could you uh, uh, take over now and give us a, uh, a kind of a review of this bill. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, everyone. Uh, House Bill 2237, this uh, bill would extend the eligible time period for the Rural Opportunity Zone, a RAS uh, loan repayment program, and also the income tax credit for individuals who establish domicile within a rural opportunity zone uh, county for uh, two years. Uh, currently, the Ross program is scheduled to uh, end June 30, 2021. Uh, under the bill, the, the program would continue through June 30, 2023, and the tax credit would be extended through tax year 2023. Uh, the bill becomes effective upon publication in the statute book, and I can stand for any questions. 
Anyone uh, have any questions for David? I don't, I don't see any. Uh, Representative Hoheisel, do you see any? Thanks, David. Thank you. Well, uh, um, I'm sorry, really quick, Mr. Chairman, this is Jennifer Day. Um, yes, I Jennifer. Hi, I know Nick is unmuting himself, but I still can't hear him, I don't think, because it looked like he was talking. So Representative Ho Heisel, uh, when he speaks, I'm not able to hear him. Okay, Representative Ho Heisel, can you give us a, uh, a message and see if we can all pick you up? Mr. Chair, I'm always of the opinion that a silent representative Hose Heisel is the best representative Ho Heisel. Well, th thanks. And Representative Shu, I see you have some assistance today uh, helping you with this. She doing the technical part for you? She your technical person? Yeah, she's my WebEx expert. Representative Ho Heisel, are you on? Mr. Chair, can you hear me now? Yes, yeah, we can. I do apologize on first computers. I have no idea uh, what was going on with that computer. I did have one question for David, if I may. Um, David, um, what was the original length of the uh, Ross program as far as needing reauthorization? Was it a 10 year program? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd have to. I don't know that off the top of my head. I'd have to go back to the original legislation and, and see what that was. If you give me a few moments. I could probably find that out for you, though. Okay, not a problem. You could just email to me when you find that, David. It's not your job. Just curious. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And Representative Ho Heisel, I, I didn't catch the first part of your question. What was that? I was just curious about um, the original legislation for the Ross program and how long the authorization was for, was it originally set up as a 10 year program or did you guys have to go in and reauthorize every five years? Uh, that was the basis of my question. It was originally, and Melissa, you may be able to answer this, but I believe it, a bit, it uh, initially went into effect in 2011 and I believe it's had one extension of the sunset. But Melissa, do you have any information on that? Uh, Mr. Chairman, that sounds correct, but we'll uh, confirm with David and make sure the committee has complete information. Thanks. Uh, Thank Thank well, the, the re I'll give you a little background on, on why uh, uh, we've got this bill today and, and want it to uh, move on. It's kind of a precautionary uh, bill because there is a, a new bill working its way to us that is, uh, I think, uh, more or less a ROS program on steroids. Um, there have been the original part of the program, which was the student loan assistance and the uh, income tax uh, credits uh, is in the new bill, but there's some other avenues on how to make it uh, more accessible by more individuals and also uh, provide some other options for counties if they would uh, don't have uh, the need actually for the student loan assistance and for the original part of the RAWS uh, for them to still participate and help uh, uh, make their county more attractive to new residents. And we will hear about that in the neutral portion of our testimony today. And that's from uh, David Sofer of the Kansas Department of Commerce. So what we want to do, I think it'll be a fairly quick hearing uh, because most of the testimony is uh, written, but uh, we'd like to um, uh, officially open the hearing on House Bill 2237. And 
I am going to, since I'm going to be one of the ones that testify in this, I'm going to turn uh, our hearing over right now to uh, Vice Chair Hoheisel uh, to take it, and then uh, we can uh, move on through this. I think it'll be quick, but uh, again, it's one that with only three meetings left after today, uh, we need to get this to where we are in a position to move on it. Rep Vice Chair Hoheisel, if you could take it away. Thank you for that, Mr. Chair. Uh, we'll start with our proponents today. Our first proponent will be uh, Representative Chairman Jim Kelly, District 11. Chairman Kelly, take it away. Thank you, Vice Chairman Hoheisel, Representative uh, Chu, our uh, Ranking D, and all the committee members. Uh, the reason for this bill, and I explained it a little bit uh, uh, earlier, is that the existing ROS program, which started in 2011, and as David indicated, it will sunset uh, June 30th of this year. And the ROS program uh, is one. There's 77 counties in the program. Uh, it has uh, been around for uh, since uh, 2011. As, and uh, currently has uh, 77 counties in the program. And uh, Montgomery County, the, uh, where my district uh, is, uh, uh, joined the program uh, about 2015 was its first year. And uh, at that time, uh, our principal reason for wanting to get in the program is that we're on the Oklahoma border and we have a number of industries in the county that have their employees uh, living out of state, living in Oklahoma, especially a number of the professional level employees that come in, engineers and uh, and some of the other technical ones. So we uh, joined the program. Our uh, economic development uh, director, Tricia Purden is going to follow me up with more detail, but uh, the program in Montgomery County has had over 125 people uh, sign up to participate in it. Um, one of the, probably one of the downsides of the uh, uh, ROS program is that in order to participate in the student loan repayment, the county has to put in money to match the $1,500 that could come from the state. And our county's done that, but we don't have enough money uh, to deal with the 60-some uh, that are still on the RAWS waiting list that have been approved but haven't uh, uh, been able to get uh, the student loan reimbursement. And the new bill has some avenues for them to do that. But uh, right now, there is a new bill coming out uh, Ms. Purden, along with uh, the uh, Department of Commerce, have put together some of the new pieces. It's uh, the bill is in the revisor's office and about ready to come out. And I, I think it, it'll be uh, uh, sent to us uh, after it's introduced, and we will be able to work on it uh, in the second half of the session. But this is kind of a backup plan in case something happens. Um, don't want the ROS program to sunset and then be in a position where we have uh, a number of uh, people still wanting to apply and no program to apply to. So uh, when the new bill comes in and if we uh, are able to get it and if it looks favorable and is passed out and uh, passes out the um, House and Senate, works its way to the governor and it's signed and this this bill today would uh, if it's done before the end of the session this bill today would uh, not be needed uh, but if it doesn't happen if we uh, bleed over into next year then uh, would want to keep the program alive because it'll just work more efficiently that way so uh, probably end my part with uh, about uh, a couple days before uh, we came to Topeka in January, I had a phone call from a 
young engineer that works at one of the large uh, manufacturing plants in Montgomery County, concerned that the ROS program was going, going to end. He had uh, uh, been a graduate of uh, Nebraska University and had gone to work as an engineer in, a, in this uh, plant uh, over in uh, the south part of our county. And he told me that uh, he wanted to be sure that it uh, that it continued. He was using it to try to convert some of his uh, friends to encourage them to uh, come to uh, southeast Kansas to work. And the only reason and uh, to live in uh, uh, Montgomery County where this plant is, the reason that he was living in Kansas and not in uh, Bartlesville, Oklahoma, was the Ross program that the ROS program had been the incentive, one of the incentives that had uh, caused him to accept the position. And it was the reason that he was living in Kansas instead of Missouri. And that's the goal uh, uh, because a couple of our larger industries in, uh, in Montgomery County at one time had 33% of their staff living out of state. And most of those were living in Oklahoma for uh, whether it's uh, uh, perceived reasons of it's cheaper or just because they wanted to uh, uh, live in a, in a larger community. But in his case, his choice was Kansas because of the Ross program uh, for uh, what it could help him do. So that I would be happy to take any questions and then uh, we can proceed and uh, learn a little bit more about the new program and what Ross has done. Thanks, uh, Vice Chair Ho Heisel, and I'll, I'll take any questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, are there any questions for Representative Kelly? Uh, Representative Glenn. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I was just asking or curious to know what data you have from various performance measures. What, what are you collecting? Well, the uh, the uh, Department of Commerce uh, had some performance measures, and that was one of the reasons. Uh, in some counties, the ROS program had been extremely su successful, like Montgomery County. In some, uh, it had not been successful, be either because the county didn't participate or it wasn't uh, uh, advertised uh, heavily, and that's the reason that uh, a working group was put together and uh, Ms. Purden was on that group to craft a new ROS program that uh, offers uh, more opportunities to have more participation. And so that's the reason for the, the new bill that's coming out. She'll tell you a little bit more about that, but they did have some performance features and it, and it, very, it did vary from county to county. I mean, uh, our county had, like I said, over 125 applicants. We re recruited a number of uh, professionals uh, and uh, and technical people into the county for jobs. Our program was successful to the extent that uh, we did not have enough money to match the students that had qualified for the student loan repayment portion of the project. And if they did not move in from out of state, uh, uh, which is the requirement for the income tax credit or portion of the project, they, they really applied, qualified, but did not have any benefits. So um, it varied from county to county. And I think you'll probably hear that from uh, uh, the uh, uh, Department of Commerce here in their neutral testimony and also from uh, Ms. Purden, who was involved in in uh, working on and uh, uh, the uh, new bill that is going to make our way to the committee, that it should make it much more uh, uh, provide uh, much better results and give more counties options if they don't have the funds uh, to supply all of the student loan uh, repayment needs because they have to. $1,500 is the maximum match for a student loan repayment per year. And to get that match, uh, that comes from the state. And to get that match, 
uh, the county or uh, uh, or a limited number of other uh, matching opportunities have to take place or that doesn't happen. And in our case, we have 60 some uh, that's uh, not happening because the county is funding 10 and that's all they've uh, been able to do uh, since we went into the program. They've done uh, a total of $15,000 a year and uh, with no alternative on uh, really how to do it. So that's what's made the uh, program a little less efficient in some counties is the money that's not available. And I don't know whether that answers your whole uh, question, Representative Lynn, but you will hear, I think, some figures on uh, coming up on uh, uh, the success in, one, in some counties versus the really not too successful in a, in a number of the other 77. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would just be, uh, hopefully we can see those, the, the actual numbers and the data. That's what I would like to see. Thank you. Thank you for that question. Committee, I do want to point you to an email just uh, forwarded by Rich. It's 2020 um, annual report of the Ross program. Um, it just got emailed out within the last two minutes. So definitely take a look at that. Uh, Representative Day. Uh, thank you so much, um, Representative Ho Heisel. Uh, Chairman Kelly, I'm just wondering really quick, um, well, maybe not so much really quick, but um, do you anticipate that there's any other legislation that we're currently working on this session that would impact the ability for certain counties to fully participate in programs like RAWS? I'm just thinking of, uh, for example, SB 13 that we worked on last week in taxation. So um, just from my newbie perspective um, and just hearing about this, this program, which seems pretty cool, I'm wondering if, if in your experience, um, you see that as being an issue at all. Thank you so much. Well, uh, Representative Day, there's there's the potential it could be, but uh, the bill that we are, I think that we'll have coming our way has some options that will not require uh, only the county to fund the student loan repayment portion. There's some options for uh, a city could, an employer could, and uh, and uh, some other individuals could fund it, and that would that would put us in a lot better position uh, as far as uh, either if there was if uh, a bill like Senate Bill 13 impacted that, or it would also allow some of the ones that are on the waiting list that they could have some other options that could be approved by the county uh, to. Uh, provide the funds and still enable them to participate in the program. So uh, I think the new bill uh, would have uh, a lot more opportunities uh, than uh, the current bill that we're looking to just make sure that it doesn't expire. Thank you so much for your help with that, Mr. Chairman. All right, are there any other questions for uh, Chairman Kelly? All righty, seeing none. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Why don't you represent? On. Yeah, move ahead. Yes, sir. We will move on to Trisha Purden, Executive Director, Montgomery County Action Council. Uh, Trisha, welcome, and I hope you're staying warm today. I'm certainly trying. It's uh, my watch says it's negative four right now in Coffeeville, Kansas. So, uh, thank you very much, uh, Vice Chair Ho Heisel, and uh, Chairman Kelly for inviting me to uh, come and provide information regarding um, House Bill 2237. Um, for a little bit of background, Montgomery County Action Council, we are the economic development organization for Montgomery County. Um, but I also work with um, several Southeast Kansas um, economic development organizations and chambers and serve on the Kansas Economic Development Alliance as well. Um, we are um, excited that Representative Kelly introduced this bill in this committee, um, mostly because of exactly what he just said. We want to make sure we extend the current sunset date from July 1st, 2021 to July 1st, 2023. 
in order to allow uh, additional time in case we have another issue like we had last legislative cycle and we have and of course you guys have to end session early and so um i know you're going to be hearing from kansas department of commerce about the new bill but as jim kelly said i also served on that committee um, over the past several months i think we started working this concept in in late spring of last year and worked on several different options from organizations throughout the state of Kansas, um, in rural communities, in larger communities. Um, we had part participation from the Senate and House on that committee to really talk about the successes and the challenges that the current RAWS program has. Um, Montgomery County, though, has been one of the uh, highest users of the program. Although I will say that I think the original intent of the program was to help reverse population decline. Um, we still have not seen that happen yet in Montgomery County. However, in speaking with several industries here in Montgomery County, from our larger manufacturers to healthcare organizations, it has made a dramatic difference in their recruiting process. Um, specifically, um, one specific instance was having a doctor that is on RAWS um, and getting that student loan forgiveness process uh, for them, they are able to live in Montgomery County. So if there is an emergency, they're able to respond much faster and get to the hospital much faster for their patients. Um, so this program has been extremely successful in that it encourages them to live in Kansas. We are a border community. And so we often find that our employers um, tell us that their employees are living down in Bartlesville or in Owasso. Um, those communities are definitely growing and getting closer and closer to the Kansas border, which allows people to commute uh, from Oklahoma into Kansas. The reason why that's such a challenge in our area, especially coming from an economic development perspective, is the fact that if we provide incentives and programs for these employers, to open their business, to grow their business here in Kansas, if their employees are not living in Kansas, we do not see the return on investment of our incentive programs, taxpayer dollars going to these businesses if the employees aren't living here in Kansas. Um, they're not buying bread and milk in our grocery stores. They're not purchasing gas in our, in our gas stations. And so that money is leaving the state of Kansas um, instead of pulling it back into our local community. So this is why RAWS is such an important program to continue, especially for those counties that are border counties. Um, our population is about 33,000 here in Montgomery County. We are the highest user of the tax credit program. Um, and I would say that in speaking with several of our companies, that is because of those those tax credits are why they were able to recruit nurses, doctors, engineers, and have them stay in Kansas versus live in Oklahoma. Um, they have told me over and over again that workforce recruitment is their number one issue facing their business and their opportunity to grow or to thrive. This also goes into play when we recruit a new business. Um, luckily, before, uh, before COVID, we had a record breaking year of new recruitment. And one of these businesses in particular wants to move all of their, their employees that are currently in Missouri to Montgomery County. And this program is key for them in their final decision-making process. Uh, we're excited to see some of the growth what we're seeing, but again, if we don't have those employees living in our county, we don't see the return on investment that we used in our cost benefit analysis um, to really make those numbers work uh, to recruit them. So lastly, I will say, I again, I served on that committee for the new bill that's coming out. Um, I'm really excited about that option. Um, I think it allows more flexibility for counties to adapt to what they truly need. Uh, a one-size-fits-all program doesn't work very well. Um, as you can see, Montgomery County, we're the highest user of the tax credit program, um, but we still only had, I think, uh, I think we have 14 now that have gone through the student loan forgiveness program here in Montgomery County um, because we weren't able to market it very well to say, here's this program, get signed on for this program to have an employer match. Uh, the county only can designate so much money each year 
And so we weren't able to get as many people through the student loan forgiveness program. Um, however, I think that some of the programs allowing foundations, which I've already got uh, assurances from two of our foundations down here, that they would be very excited to participate on a program like this. Um, our, um, our organization, MAC, has even discussed about sponsoring some employers, especially those in uh, entrepreneurship positions. We had several new startups, uh, mom and pop companies that wanted to open our county, um, and they didn't ever end up moving here because of this program. Um, there just wasn't enough to get them to move from Bartlesville to Montgomery County, even though they opened their business here. Um, so things like that, I think, would let us grow our small business entrepreneurship programs as well um, and help us grow our county. So with that, I'm open for questions uh, regarding my testimony. Thank you for that, Tricia. Do we have any questions for Tricia today? And I'm not seeing any. So thank you so much, Tricia, for being here today and uh, testifying. And like I said, I hope you're staying warm and, uh, and talking. Thank you very much. Thank you. All righty, we will move on to the written portion. Um, committee, I will point you to the written only proponents. Tara Mays, Vice President of the Kansas Hospital Association. Wendy Stark, uh, Research Associate for the League of Municipalities. Christy Hopkins, Director, Greeley County Community Development. Katie Eisenha Eisenhower, Executive Director of Scott City, or I'm sorry, Scott County Development. Ralph Goodnight, Director, uh, Kearney County Community Development. Lika Mahan, I'm sorry, Luke Mahan, Director, Republic County Economic Development. And Erica Nicholson, Director, Gove County Economic Development. Um, with that, is there anybody else wishes to testify as a proponent today? And seeing none. We will close the proponent testimony um, and move to the neutral where we have David Sofer, Legislative and Policy Director for the Kansas Department of Commerce. David, take it away. Thank you. Um, first of all, appreciate the opportunity to be here today. Uh, as mentioned, we will be testifying as neutral, but I do want to make sure I share one thing from the onset. Um, by all means, we are certainly I'm um, hopeful that the legislature will approve an extension of the ROS program. Uh, the reason being that rural, op rural uh, counties certainly need more options in their toolbox, not fewer, um, you know, especially in light of the fact that the economy is, is unfortunately going to hit hard here. We do need as many um, uh, available options to those rural counties in order to be able to, uh, to hopefully hit some vibrancy and, and be able to stop some of that outmigration that, that we're going to talk about. Um, but the reason why we're neutral is, is, as mentioned, we do have a proposal that I that I do want to at least begin to walk you all through. But just um, especially for the newer members or folks that may not necessarily remember, because I think the last year, you know, going back to last year, it certainly feels like five years with everything we've been through in the last 12 months. But um, in January of 2020, uh, Secretary Tolan at the time did come and present to you a detailed ROS report that, that we did. Um, it was the first time that we looked at a very um, detailed view of the program and what the program was able to accomplish. Um, and, and to be honest, we did see, you know, mixed results. So I, I know there was some requests for some data. So, for example, um, we found that over 30 counties do not really commit any resources to the program. Um, we also found that 80% of student loan recipients in 2019 would have moved to that county regardless of the program. Um, so, you know, there was a reason being that we really wanted to dig deep and that's why you know, our commitment last year when, when a bill similar to this came up was let us do a working group, let us study, talk with the stakeholders and figure out what solution can we find to what we want this program to be. Um, you know, so when we created this working group, we asked, we had state legislators, we had county commissioners, we had folks from counties like Montgomery, Republic, Greeley, um, and Phillips who utilize this program tremendously and have great success with the student loan portion. We also had folks from counties like Anderson um, and Thomas that, that don't use this program, uh, don't use the student loan portion very much at all, uh, and trying to figure out what their needs are, what can we be doing better. Um, so the goal here was really to get a 
diverse group of people into a room or more so, more so because of COVID um, remotely to figure out what could we be doing better um, and what program probably makes the most sense for our rural communities long term, knowing that realistically there is no one size fits all approach. Every county's got different needs, every region's got different needs and you know, what might work for some won't, won't work for others and that's okay. So let's figure out what we can do to get, take care of those needs and knowing that this program is not going to be the end all be all. Um, it, it has to be, it, it can only be one piece of the puzzle. But nonetheless, um, one of the things that really came up during that conversation uh, was housing. Housing was a tremendous need that, that uh, obviously I don't think is any secret, but our counties wanna be able to solve. So it's not just being able to build more housing, but also getting folks to move. Uh, one of the complaints that we heard about the student loan portion was that folks that come to Kansas to take part of this get the payout on the student loan for five years. There's no um, requirement to stay. And then sometimes they leave right after they get paid out or go right across the border or whatever it be. Um, and so we wanted to be sensitive to that and try to come up with a solution that may work better for counties long term in order to increase their participation. Because at the end of the day, if if counties aren't really participating in the program, then then the program itself is not going to succeed and you're not going to maximize the results and the efficiency. Of it. So with that, we did kind of talk through, we, I think we had about 10 different meetings over the span of six months. Uh, we had kind of, we broke up into different like subgroups to try to discuss some items. So this really was the result of a, of a group think of being able to put together a lot of different ideas. Uh, what I will mention to you is we weren't necessarily able to agree on everything. And so there are a couple of things I want to highlight and make sure that hopefully there's a little bit less heartburn on as they're really meant as kind of a starting point, simply because the group uh, provided a, a wide variety of answers and, and we wanted to make sure that we address those. So um, a couple of just the main factors. So currently 77 counties uh, are able to participate in the ROS program. We want to be able to def officially define what a ROS county is. Currently, if you look at it, uh, counties were just added. Um, so originally it was 50 and then there wasn't, you know, as we got through to the third and fourth kind of uh, increases, there was not necessarily a specific definition of what a Roz County is. Um, on this one, we weren't necessarily able to agree as a group. Um, so we put into place a population standard of 35,000 or under for the county. Um, again, that's meant to kind of start the discussion, figure out whether that number makes sense, should it be higher, should it be lower. But the goal here was to at least start it. We did kind of get a wide variety, wide variety anywhere from 35,000 to 5,000. Um, so we figured we'd start it at 35,000 and, and kind of start the discussion from there. Um, a couple of other really important points on this. A lot of feedback was it's not utilized in retention. There are a lot of folks that want to be able to come home from college uh, and they're not able to utilize it based on the way the current law is written. So currently you have to be able to, you currently had to have changed your domicile to wherever you went to school to in order to be able to take advantage of the program. Otherwise you can't do that. Uh, so we wanna be able to allow our young graduates to come home, um, especially if they wanna come home long-term. So we wanna be able to allow um, folks that do go to school, if they wanna come back immediately to Raz County, um, you could take advantage of that program. Another key piece to this is that um, currently in the student loan portion, it's only for associates and bachelor's degrees. Uh, I think for those of you that certainly, uh, there are a couple that sit on commerce I know, and certainly those of you that kind of are, are, you know, are seeing kind of where the global economy is headed, vocational and tech certificates, that's a big piece of what our rural counties need. And that is certainly a big piece of kind of where the workforce is headed and a focus on that. So we wanna be able to include those as well. So if you've got a welder, for example, that wants to come to a Ross County, that's great. That's, I, I know there are multiple you know, rural counties that certainly need more welders. And so we wanna be able to allow them to utilize that tool to be able to recruit. So we do, we do wanna expand some of the eligibility there. Um, and then the big piece that we really want to be able to open is so the governor has committed that if you want, if you're happy with Roz as is, that's great. So we still are going to keep the student loan. We'll still keep the income tax. Um, 
But again, as we mentioned, one of the big things we had heard was housing. And so we want to be able to allow folks to uh, utilize the ROS program for assistance with closing costs. So closing costs, just for those, uh, just to kind of rehash this, it's, it's a little bit different than kind of your down payment. It's a smaller amount. Uh, that's why we targeted 3% of the closing costs as opposed to the down payment. The reason being is that we're just, we're cognizant of the fact that we've got limited funds for this program currently. And so if you begin to kind of approach the down payment side, um, we may run out of funds extremely quick. And so that's why we focused more so on 3% of closing costs. Although again, that's kind of meant as a starting point, but the goal here really is to allow folks to utilize this program. If you're interested in purchasing housing, you're interested in living your community long-term, let's utilize ROS to do that. Um, we heard from multiple counties that don't use the program currently that they would be much more inclined to use it for housing than they would for student loans. And so that's why we put the home buyer down payment assistance in there. And then lastly, um, we do want counties to commit some funds to the program. Currently, as I mentioned, um, there are 30 counties that do not commit resources. 20 counties do not even allow the student loan portion. That's at its highest rate of all time. So uh, we're currently, see so we are seeing kind of a trend of more counties getting away from the student loan portion, and they're just not seeing value in that. So from our end, we put a starting point of $10,000. Um, I do know that may create some heartburn for some of the smaller counties, which is why, again, it's meant to be a starting point to figure out what that right number is. Maybe it's a sliding scale. We weren't able to necessarily find that magical kind of formula in our committee uh, or working group. So we wanted to be able to at least start it from there and be able to discuss that. Now, if all of that is something that a county doesn't want to do or it doesn't add up for them, um, we do want to create kind of this completely separate track that they can opt into. So you kind of pick and choose. You can kind of pick which, which avenue you want to go down. So that was avenue one, the student loan, the down payment assistance, and the income tax. Second pathway is to create and rehabilitate housing. Um, so it kind of be a five-year plan. It would depend on what your community needs are. So you may not necessarily need five years, um, but basically it would be focused on fix, you know, marketing and community image. So you could be able to attract and retain folks. Um, that also means, you know, being able to make sure that you've got, uh, you know, your community of community improvement projects that are taken care of, your main streets are vibrant. Um, and so matching grants would be provided in order to be able to do that. And then, you know, a three-year plan really of assessing where you're at with your housing, um, being able to uh, work with the state to help get kind of a matching fund process to be able to create a pool that you'd be able to pay to, you know, for new housing and working with the industry itself to be able to figure out what, how many, how many uh, units make the most sense for your community. Um, and being able to help raise those equity pools. And then again, being able to, re you know, construct and rehabilitate that housing as well. Um, so we're still working on kind of that second part, um, being able to draft that into writing um, for a proposed bill. I think the revisor is working on it currently, which is what a little bit of the holdup is. But um, as you can see, we really wanted to be able to change the path. Um, one of the biggest things, again, is folks need more housing. And so this could be a tool that is utilized instead of, if a county doesn't believe that the current ROS program is working, maybe some funds towards, you know, rehabilitation of housing, creating new housing is the way to go for them. And we want to be able to provide that option. So um, that's kind of a, a quick synopsis into what this new bill would be. Our, our hope is it's, it's going to be finished here shortly and be introduced. Um, but with that, again, I want to make sure uh, we do, we do want to make sure ROS continues this year. So if, for whatever reason, we don't get done. Um, with being able to get this bill introduced in time and be able to work it, um, we do think that Raj should be extended. Certainly, if you see some tools in here that you like, um, feel free to put them in, in, you know, in the current bill. But at the end of the day, we want to be able to make sure that Raj does move forward. Um, but we also want to make sure we do address some of the, the issues with the current program. So if it can't be done this year because whatever reason, uh, COVID doesn't allow it, we do want to come back next year and work on this because it's so incredibly important. Um, we do have to create more efficiencies within the program. So with that, I appreciate the opportunity to testify. I'd be happy to stand with any for any questions. All right. Here. Are there any questions for David today? It looks like Chairman Kelly. Thank you, Vice Chair. And David, I just wanted to let you know and the committee know is that last night uh, 
not late, but in the evening, I, I got a, a received an email from the revisor that's working on the bill and they have it uh, ready shortly to go out for review. So uh, you'll get to see it and, and uh, uh, a copy's gonna come to me. And so we're close and the hope is that we can get it in uh, uh, and it will uh, be moved to our committee because it truly is rural development. And then we'll be able to uh, work on it in the second half of the session. So you're you're really close to getting getting it to look at. Great, that's exciting news. Cause yeah, we definitely wanna be able to get it to you guys as quickly as possible. Are there any other questions for David? Um, David, I, I have one uh, quick question. I was looking at a presentation that the Department of Commerce made in 2019, um, and it had a list on there, it had a map of Kansas and the list of counties that participate in uh, the Ross program. And on the county to county breakdown, over half the counties were, uh, their individual statistics were confidential. Um, why would that be? And is, are there any other ways we could find those individual county by county breakdown statistics? Sure. So cool. I believe what you're, I believe what you're referring to is the income tax credit portion. So there is a reason why we don't utilize uh, those statistics as much in our presentation. The reason being is that according to Kansas law, if a county has five claimants or fewer. Um, the state itself cannot disclose how many recipients of that tax credit um, there are in a county. So while we have specific data for counties that are larger um, and have more claimants, um, there are far too many counties where we just don't, we don't, we're not able to disclose that data, not even like revenue cannot disclose it to the Department of Commerce, let alone um, disclosing it in a public document. So uh, it does create a lot of challenges with being able to figure out how many folks are utilizing it um, in those smaller counties. So that's why it comes up as confidential. And that's why we really try to steer away from some of that data. Um, it's just, it's incomplete, unfortunately, due to Kansas statute. Okay, and, and what, I mean, I'm not sure if you were around when that statute was put in place. Do you have any reason or rationale why that statute was put in place in the first place? I don't, that'd be a question for Department of Revenue and I can see if I could try to get you an answer on that. Okay, I'd appreciate that. Um, it's just, it makes it easier for us to get when we really want to drill down county by county and see what's working uh, regionally. That's something that I definitely want to uh, look at. Are there any more questions for David? All right, seeing none. Thank you so much, David, for being here today. Um, Committee will move on. We have no other neutrals listed or written neutrals. Is there anybody that would like to testify uh, neutral today? Seeing none, we'll move on to the opponents. I have no opponents listed. Are there anybody on that wishes to testify as an opponent? All righty, seeing none, we have no written opponents either. So we'll go ahead and close the hearing on HB 2237. And I will yield the floor back to Chairman Kelly. Thank you, Vice Chair. Excellent job. Um, appreciate again, everyone uh, uh, tuning in, uh, being in the committee room with Rich uh, to hear this. Uh, it's something that will come our way it has the potential to be uh, with some of the changes heard discussed, uh, maybe a real uh, real development uh, forward. Uh, in the counties that Roz has worked, it's worked well. And so that's why I wanted to get this uh, uh, out on our agenda uh, to hear this. So our next meeting will be Wednesday, February 17th. And so to have two meetings to go, but uh, in this first half. On the 17th, we'll have, uh, uh, looks like if everything works out right, uh, three bills to hear on the 17th, and then all ones that we'd have a potential to 
to do something with that session, which will be a week from this coming Wednesday. So, uh, anyone have anything uh, for the uh, good of the committee that you'd like to bring forward right now? I don't see anything. Representative Hoheisel, do you? Um, so, no, sir. If, if, so with uh, with that, uh, we will adjourn our meeting. Uh, see you on Wednesday, and I hope uh, the back that I have on my screen will look more like Wednesday than what it really does today. So, uh, warm and stay safe, and see you on Wednesday.